For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Salvation is wrought by the one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Those words were spoken by God, the Lord Jesus Christ. We stand here, for the Bible says, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is that Christ died for your sin, was buried according to the Scriptures, and arose again on the third day according to the Scriptures. The Jesus Christ of salvation is the Jesus Christ of the Bible. The Apostle Paul warns us to the church of the Corinthians, there is another Jesus. There is another Spirit. There is another Gospel. There is another Doctrine. You've got to be sure that your eternal state upon death is resting upon Jesus Christ of the Bible that is God. As I said, we come here, try to be here, Lord willing, every week. For the Bible says, go ye all the world and preach the gospel. I'm going to read out of the book of Proverbs, chapter 1. What I'm going to read to you out of Proverbs, written by the wisest man of all the earth, by God going to read to you why we are here. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20. Wisdom crieth out. She utters her voice in the street. Wisdom crieth out. What I'm telling you from the Bible is God's wisdom. And He's too loud. But wisdom crieth without. She uttered her voice in the street. God has given me a voice to preach to you about Jesus Christ. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Though you believe it not, what I am preaching to you out of the Bible, I'm giving you chapters and verses out of the Bible, what God has said. What we are doing and what we have done and what we prepare to do, Lord willing, is to give you the wisdom of the Bible. Wisdom cries without. She utters her voice in the streets. She cries in the chief place of concord, a place of business. What better place of concord would be the Daytona Beach, Florida, at a farmer's market where business and concord is about. We come here because there are people here to hear the gospel. Your business brings the gospel because your customers get to hear what God says. And week after week after week, you get to hear what the gospel says. God has told us not only to go in all the world and preach the gospel, but go somewhere where business transactions are being held, go somewhere where there are merchants, and go somewhere where there are customers, and tell them about wisdom. In the openings of the gates, stand at the city lines. 
the boundary lines of cities, towns, villages, states, countries. When they come into a new territory, when they're coming home from an old territory, when they enter into their city, state, wherever they're coming into, at that boundary line, let there be the gospel, the wisdom being preached. No man should be able to come into a city or town without hearing Jesus Christ being preached. So the Bible, Proverbs chapter 1. What you hate, what you despise, what we do, God calls it wisdom. And God says in Romans chapter 10, I love them feet. We are commanded by the Bible to do what we do for your soul. Notice we're not commanded by the Bible to take your heads off. Notice we're not, we're not told by the Bible to shed your blood like other religions. Notice I'm not over here telling you to eat a body and drink its blood. Notice that we tell you the wisdom of God is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Today's message to my church where two or three are gathered together, there I am in the midst of them. My message to you today is why we do what we do. And what we do is found in the Bible. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Why? Because you're going to die, and I'm going to say that word, you're going to burn in hell if you don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. i got to say hell at least once. Because your preachers and your priests and your rabbis won't say hell. So I will say hell at least once today. Because the reason why we come here with the wisdom of God is that you may not go to hell. I have to say it just once. How do you get out of hell? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Proverbs chapter 1. In the city, in the city, city of Daytona, thank you, she uttered her words saying, so wisdom speaks out in the city. Daytona City fits the Bible, Proverbs 1, for us to be here. Verse 21. Chapter 1, verse 21. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. In the center of all business ought to be the Word of God. Now, the people that maintain the Daytona Beach Farmer's Market has disallowed us to go amongst you to give you tracts about Jesus Christ. Now, we would just walk among your customers and hand them a piece of paper with the Gospel. But you told us no. So since we can't give you a piece of paper, the Daytona Farmer's Market, people that are in charge, has brought me here to preach to you because we can't go quietly among your people. The reason why we preach every week is you won't allow us in there with the gospel. So I will use my loud voice and an amplifier to make my voice sound like a trumpet, to speak, to cry out. To show my people their transgressions, the book of Isaiah. In the middle of all business, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 1, is to be wisdom, God's wisdom. Now what is knowledge? Knowledge is what you know. Wisdom is to take what you know and how to use it. I know how to drive an automobile. 
Wait for me when I take that automobile, I get it at my house, and I drive down here. That's wisdom. Understanding is your relationship to God. I know how to drive an automobile. In wisdom, I came down here with my vehicle. And in understanding, I am using that ability to bring you the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. All a diploma is is an expensive piece of paper that can't do you nothing in glory. It may get you a good job here, but a diploma, a certificate, will not get you into heaven. Only by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ without spot. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. America is not a Christian nation no more because God is not amidst the commerce and the business. And when you put on your money in God we trust, what a joke. You don't trust God any more than you trust Obama. How long, ye simple ones, will love simplicity? In the Bible, one classification of people are simple ones. And it's not a deframing title. It means you just don't know. You live life to the simplest. There's no complication. It's not a threatening word. You do what you do and then that's what you do. It's simple. You go about your life. But why keep on going like that? Why don't you venture out and say, you know what? One day I'm going to die. What do I do? How do I, what happens, what is this death thing? Don't be simple about death when you're like, oh, I'm just going to die, nothing's going to happen. Ain't going to happen to me, it'll be tomorrow. It may be today. And the scorners delight in their scorning. Scorning, what's that? Oh, every morning I see you. You ain't an American, you're a scorner in the eyes of God. And the Bible describes you perfectly. Scorners are ones that say, I don't like what you're doing. You offend me. But tough. God says, go eat all the world and preach the gospel and don't care about the lazy jellyfish. Don't care about the scorners. Take the wisdom and preach it in the streets, in the cities. You're not going to stop me unless you kill me. Scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. There are the simpletons, there are the scorners, and there are the fools. What is a fool? A fool, the book of Psalms says, there is no God in his heart. In the Bible, if you believe in atheism, in the Bible, I'm not saying it, the book of Psalms in two places, if you are an atheist, the Bible says you are a fool. The Bible says, go to the city of Daytona, the city, the chief of concourse, go to the farmer's market, concourse, and preach to the simpletons, preach to the scorners, and preach to the fools. Preach to those who don't know any better. Preach to those that want you to shut up. Those that don't like you, keep preaching. And preach to the atheists about God. And to the atheists, I have to say, the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. Just because you don't believe in God doesn't make him gone. I don't even believe that men ever sent men on 
the moon. That doesn't make no difference. I've never seen the Titanic, but I believe it's at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. But I've never seen it. All an atheist is saying, I have absolutely no faith. I'm faithless. And the Bible says, you're a faithless fool. And we're going to preach to you. Listen, I'm reading out of the book of Proverbs. You take offense. Oh, well. Get a backbone and get saved and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23. Turn you at my reproof. The Bible says at the preaching of that loud mouth, who's got the Bible, the Bible says you are to repent. That guy is preaching the gospel. That guy is preaching about sin. That guy is preaching about heaven and hell. Your response according to the Bible is you're to repent. And you're to get right with God. I can't do it. I can't force you. I'm not going to force you. And I'm not going to convince you. I'm not going to bribe you. I'm not going to give you gifts. I'm not going to... I'm just going to preach the gospel. And let the Holy Spirit work on your heart if there's a flame there. Because if I were to force you into salvation, you ain't got salvation. If you're going to just say a prayer, you're not saved. But your conduct according to the Bible, to the preaching of the Bible, is you're to repent. Behold, I will pour out my Spirit upon you, and will make known my words unto you. Upon you repenting of your sins and putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will get the indwelling of the Holy Spirit without tongues, without flapping as a dead fish. You'll get the gift and the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, after you have repented and after you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to get no more of the Word of God if you continue to be a simpleton. You'll have no understanding of the Word of God if you continue to scorn and ridicule. You will get nothing more from God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit if you continue to be a fool. To gain more and get more... To learn more is to repent and put your faith in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will pour out my spirit, the Holy Spirit. I will make known my words unto you. The only words you will hear. I am not going to preach about the 666. I ain't going to preach about the name of the... I ain't going to talk about the Antichrist. I'm not going to talk about politics. I ain't going to talk nothing about salvation. Because if you can't get salvation, you can't get Genesis and Revelation. You can't reject the author of the Bible, expect the author of the Bible to give you what his word says. The first words to you that are lost is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That is your message. I want to just read John 3 as much as I can in 45 minutes and pack up and go. Because that's the message to lost people. Because I have called. Wait, I thought God said wisdom was crying out. I thought God said that street preacher was crying out. But he says, because I have called. When I speak the word of God, God is speaking. That's called inspiration. 
Yes, men wrote the Bible under the inspiration of God. I am speaking out of a human mouth which God is inspiring through the Holy Spirit to you. Isaiah says, come now, let us... God is reaching out to you. He wants you to come to Him. God says, because I have called. How has God called you? Week after week after week at the Daytona City Farmer's Market, He is calling you Saturday morning. God is not going to show up in a visible form on your bed at the bar hall or at your preferred church. He's going to show up amongst a Bible-believing, preaching, hell-firing preacher. No hell, no salvation. I have stretched out my hand week after week after week. And here's the Daytona Beach Farmer's Market in the Bible. Proverbs 1, 24, and no man regardeth. The Bible already said, merchants and customers of the farmer's market, you are not going to regard the gospel. For many shall go the broad way, and few will go to the straight gate. When you reject the Bible, when you scorn our preaching, when you open up your big mouth in reliance to the Bible, you back the Bible up. You make the Word of God more assured in my life. There's a scorner right there. Yep, he's right. See? Just preach the Bible and look how people react. If I had dancing girls... Because I have called, ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man is regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel. I am giving you the counsel of God. The counsel of God is called the King James 1611 Bible. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That you need to be born again. Matter of fact, Jesus said ye must be born again. That's the counsel of God. And would none of my reproof. You won't listen to the loudmouth preacher tell you what the Bible says. You got better things. You got a better religion. You got a better thinking. You got better. You are more better than Jesus Christ Himself. Well, I'd never say that. Then why aren't you believing in Him? When you don't believe Jesus Christ, you are saying, Jesus, I am much better than you. Get out of my life. What I'm doing is perfectly fine. I'd never say that. You are saying that. I, now, this is God. Proverbs 1.26. This is Proverbs 1.26. To you that rejected Jesus Christ, God speaking, I also will laugh at your calamity. The God of love, when you get calamity in your life, He will laugh at you. When you try to reach out with your prayers, why should God answer your prayers when you won't believe what He's told you to do? When you mock his son, you expect him to come up and say, oh, okay, here's your bubble gum. No. Anybody says that God loves him and has rejected Jesus Christ, you are a liar and the person that said it too. Because there is no love to rejecting Jesus Christ, God's son. God hates the sin and loves the sinner. That's a lie on the flames of sulfur of hell. If God loves the sinners, why did He destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Why did He destroy loves the sinners? Why are sinners in hell today if God loves the sinners? That is false doctrine. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That love in John 3.16 is past tense. 
When you come to Calvary and reject Jesus Christ, there is no more love of God. If you want the love of God, you come to Calvary and receive Christ, and then you get the love of God. I will mock when your fear cometh. As you mock the Bible, as you mock Jesus Christ, as you mock His preachers, when it comes to your fear, God will mock you. Come on, Mr. Atheist. Pray to that non-God. Let that non-God help you. Come on, let Mary help you. Mary's dead. Mary's in the ground. Popes died. Come on, pray. Let's see the Pope help you, Mexico. Come on. You know the poorest nations in this world are under the Roman Catholic Church, under the Pope that has a bunker, has a castle, has a military guard, has all kinds of money. And yet his people are dirt poor. You want that guy as, a, as your God, you keep him. He'll slip in a bathtub one day. He'll die and end up in hell where you're going. I serve the holy righteous God. The God of the Bible. And his name is not Allah. Jehovah. When your fear comes as desolation, and your destruction comes as a whirlwind, when your distress and anguish cometh upon you, when all troubles and problems come, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Listen, there may come a day in your life that you will refuse the message of the gospel for the last time. If I read my Bible correct, God allows someone to plant a seed, one, and God allows someone to water the seed, two. The Bible says that as far as a lost man, God only has to witness to you two times. That's what the Bible says. Paul says, I have planted, Apollos watered. God only has to tell you twice about His Word. We come week after week after week. You're more, more prone to have God deny you because you hear His Gospel every week. Never mind the heathen in Africa, the heathen in Daytona Beach. Listening to the Gospel every week and rejecting Jesus Christ. And then you expect God to answer your prayers when you got trials and tribulations. I don't think so. God is not United States of America. He don't take care of dead feet. He don't take care of lazy people. Like America does. Thank you, So you want America, God. I want everything for free. Nothing's free. For they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. You did not want to listen to God and His Word. You despised that preacher and rejected the Word. That's your problem. And if you were to die right now, you will end up in hell, not because of fornication or adultery or premarital sex. You will enter into a devil's hell by rejecting Jesus Christ as your Savior. You will go to hell because you have not listened, not me, you haven't listened to the Bible that I'm holding. God just said, go, and I went. He could send anybody. I'm nothing compared to the Bible. According to God and our message on street preaching, all I am is a pair of feet to God, and one of them's broken. I'm broken feet for God. Yeah, but we carry the gospel. And if you reject, God will reject you. 
There's no religion. There's no works. They would none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. You won't listen to the Bible. So in your troubles and trials and tribulations, God won't listen to you. Be not deceived, God's not mine. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. You don't want to listen to God? God won't listen to you. It's plain and simple. See, God's a holy and righteous God. He's not a sinner. And you've got to come to God on your terms. Right, I said that wrong. You've got to come to God on His terms. Not your terms. You want your terms. And God says, no. The terms are Jesus Christ. See, we are in America. Me, myself, and I. That's the God. It's all about me. What's the, what's the Constitution say? We the people, without Jesus Christ and without God, ever mentioned in that document. you got to get off self and get on God. You can't come to God with self. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 30. They were none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. There you are, written in the Bible. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their eat the fruit. Hey, look at that. All right. Farmers market fruit. I didn't even see that in there to now. You can find a Daytona farmers market in the Bible. Go ye in the city, Daytona the city, the city of Daytona, the farmers market. They shall eat the fruit of their own way. Proverbs chapter 1 is the verse that would go stapled right here above the farmer's market in Daytona Beach. Our street ministry to you. For the turning of the way the simple shall slay them. And the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkens unto me, God shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from all fear evil. Let's go back to John chapter 3. Let's see what John the Baptist has to say. John chapter 3. 3.36 He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Reject the Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospel. The wrath of God is hell. I mean literal hell. You think this world is hell, you're in for a big shock. This world has air conditioning and ice and water. Hell has neither. And you don't have to go. You can escape hell by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I sit here with the testimony that I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I am saved. And I am inviting you to come and do the same. I'm not inviting you to my church. 
I'm not inviting you to do work. I'm not even asking you for money. The people here at the Daytona Beach Farmers Market want your money. I don't. I want you to get saved. The people here at the Farmers Market doesn't appreciate us being here. Yeah, but God appreciates us being here telling you about His Son. the realm of heaven and God, it's all about Jesus Christ. Now, if you don't want to have anything to do with Jesus Christ, you will not appreciate heaven. Because in heaven, we sing and praise for all eternity Jesus Christ, the Creator, the one who died on Calvary's tree. It will be all about Jesus Christ. If you don't want to worship Jesus Christ, you can go into hell. And you can worship the me, myself, and I. Oh, give me a little drop of water. I'm being tormented. I'm in this torment. And that rich man in hell. Me, me, me. I, I, I. See, in hell you worship yourself. In hell you want mercy. Satan never gives mercy. Satan never gives grace. There are no tears in heaven, and there are no tears in hell. A pharmacist in heaven will praise Jesus Christ. A pharmacist in hell would want all the drugs he dispensed to get a little, a little relief from the pain that he's in. A doctor like Luke will worship God the Father. And a doctor in hell, all the patients he helped can't help himself. And your religion will be in hell burning with you. Your alcohol will burn in hell's fire so you can't drink it. Your pills will burn up in hell. Your friends will be too much in pain and destruction and torments to be partying, never mind having anything to do with you. But in heaven, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more sin, no more departing, a new body, and to be forever with the one that created you and the one that died for you. A place without sin, without torment, without destruction. All on believing on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. The gospel is that Christ died for your sin. He was buried according to the scriptures. And on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. Make sure you have the scriptural Bible, Jesus, before you die.